you need to think really hard before choosing microservices. Is your current architecture that bad? Or maybe is the problem somewhere else? Our job as engineers is to think logically and choose and build solutions that bring value. Solutions that bring value, not just play around with the latest tech or the shiniest new thing. In this video, we are going to see four questions that will help us identify in which context microservices might make sense. And the last question we are going to see is often overlooked, but in my opinion, is one of the most important if we want to be successful with microservices. Most new projects don't need microservices. Usually, when an application starts, it starts small and simple. It might cover one or two major use cases or has one or two major features. If you decide to start with microservices straight away, how do you plan on splitting that small application into services? You might just end up splitting it the wrong way and have to do some refactoring down the line anyway. It's okay to start small and simple. There is a lot that can be done with one single code source and one single database. So the first question you can ask yourself is, is my application large enough to justify a microservices architecture? As time goes, you will build new features and your application will naturally grow. Or maybe you are already working on what feels like a large application and you are starting to feel the pain of having everything in a monolith application. But you should not jump straight away into microservices. You should ask yourself, what makes your application feel painful and complex? Because the pain you're feeling might have different root causes. Maybe, just maybe, you have bad code, or maybe you're not following best practices, or maybe there is a lack of automated tests. Just like a doctor would do with a patient, you need to do a thorough diagnosis in order to find the right medicine. If let's say you have poorly written code, or maybe you have some legacy tech that you're dealing with, maybe that's what you should fix first. However, if you think that you're following best practices and you have decent code, but it just turns out that you have a lot of use cases, a lot of scenarios to deal with, maybe if you're feeling pain, it's because you don't have the right architecture. So the second question you should ask yourself is, is my application complex enough to justify a microservices architecture? And just to drive the point home here, when I'm talking about complexity, I'm talking about the number of use cases, the number of scenarios, even the number of, of, of business domain that you need to support. Even if you have a large and complex application, you still have a large choice of software architectures to choose from. You could, for example, decide to split your application in loosely coupled modules and end up with a modular monolith. That would work just fine. But there are things that are just impossible with a monolith. For example, if you have a features, a feature that only affects one module, in order to release that feature, you will have to deploy the entire application Another example is if you have, let's say, an orders, um, an orders module and that has a lot of traffic. In order to handle that traffic, you will have to, again, scale your entire application. So if you are in a situation where you have to deploy often, if you are finding it, if your teams are finding it hard to collaborate in order to plan releases and deploy the new versions, or if you have parts of your application that have different scaling requirements, then you might be a good candidate for a microservices architecture. So the third question to ask yourself is, do I have parts of my application that needs to be deployed independently? At this point, you've gone through all the previous questions and you might think, okay, I'm ready to go for this microservices architecture. But there is one more question you need to ask yourself. Because software development is not just about the technical aspect. It's also about the people. 
If you decide to choose microservices architecture, this means that you have to deal with a distributed system. Do you have the right skills in your organization to set up the infrastructure, to build the deployment pipeline, the monitoring, the logging, and so on? Does your teams, do they know how much it costs to run a microservices infrastructure? Which providers, which tools to use? And aside from that, are your teams even on board with the change? Because change management on its own is a whole topic and it should not be overlooked. However, if you have a large and complex application, if you need to deploy often, maybe even do continuous deployment or continuous integration, if you feel like there are parts of your system that needs to be deployed independently and you are confident, your people are confident that they can go and run a microservices architecture, by all means, go for it. <laughs> and by the way, I'm not a hater of the microservices architecture. I love it. And if you want to learn more about it, I have other videos on the topic on my channel. You can go check them out. In particular, I have one where I go through the data complexity that are inherent to the microservices architecture.